Hello guys and welcome to the Gontu series. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the RESTful web services. Web services are mainly of two types, SOAP-based and REST-based. REST stands for Representation State Transfer Protocol, which was given by a computer scientist, Roy Fielding, in 2000. REST is a set of guidelines which talks about how a client should interact with the server. So let's suppose that there is a client and there is a server where we have deployed the RESTful web services. REST guideline says that the data and functionality which client can access on server is known as a resource and each resource should be accessed using its URI by all the clients. This is much similar to what you do on internet in order to access a particular website. You paste the address of a website on the browser's address bar and gets some representation as a response. So this is how it goes. Client would send a request in order to access a particular resource which resides on the server and the server will send back a response to the client. This response is the representation of a resource which means that a resource can be presented to the client in multiple formats. A resource can be presented in the form of HTML, XML, plain text, PDF, JPG, JSON and many other formats which are available in RESTful web services to the client. I would just reframe what we have learned so far. Client would send a request to access the resource residing on the server using its URI and the server in response would send back the representation of that resource to the client. There are three main features of RESTful web services. In RESTful web services, client can directly access a resource using its URI, which is a direct advantage of RESTful web services over SOAP web services, where the client needs WSTL and stubs of SOAP web services in order to access anything on the server. The response message which client gets is self-descriptive in nature, which means that the message in itself would contain the information of format in which the client can read the response message. RESTful Web Services uses the concept of uniform interfaces. The concept is easy to understand but would need a little more attention of yours. The communication protocol which RESTful Web Services uses is HTTP. REST guidelines talks about stateless communication between client and server, which means every single request from client to the server is treated as a new request and should be containing all information needed to establish the communication. And since HTTP best describes stateless communication protocol. RESTful Web Services uses this protocol. However, there is no restriction specified in the REST guidelines that RESTful Web Services has to use HTTP and not any other communication protocol. RESTful Web Services uses four main HTTP methods. GET to retrieve a resource, POST to create a resource, put to update a resource and delete to delete a resource. This means that when you write RESTful Web Services, you implement all these four methods for each resource in your RESTful Web Services program. So if a client just want to retrieve the resource, he would invoke the GET method of that resource. Similarly. If he wants to create, update or delete a resource, 
he would invoke the respective HTTP methods residing on the RESTful Web Services program. A RESTful Web Services developer needs to take care of the fact that in each of these four methods, he would write code which adheres to the method meaning. For example, he should not write code to delete a resource in get method, etc. I would just reframe what we have learned so far. REST specifies guidelines for client and server interactions. In this, resources residing on the server are exposed to the client using URI. And client may invoke any of the four HTTP methods to access the resources depending upon whether he wants to just retrieve that resource or perform any other operation on that resource. I would be covering how to create RESTful and SOAP web services hands-on using Java language in next lessons.